everyone. Now, let's continue our conversation with Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, you've been talking about the uh, acting CGN. Are you saying that it needs to be confirmed now? Yes. I mean, because the government has not come out with any adverse report on its uh, competence or integrity. And therefore, to put an end to these speculations and dangerous rumors, I, 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 I'm, I'm uh, uh, calling on the acting president to uh, send uh, the nomination of the Honorable Justice Walter Onoga to the Senate as soon as possible. You know, so, because by the end of uh, by uh, January 10, uh, the acting capacity will end, and send the NGC has not made any recommendation with respect to the renewal of the appointment. It has to. It, sh it should be confirmed. And in any case, there shouldn't be any fear. Because as far as the Constitution is concerned, it is the most senior justice of the Supreme Court that has been recommended for that position and whose name should go to the Senate. What if the presidency uh, defers on that and says, no, we do not want justice and again, we want someone no, else? No, no, no. The president will have to convince the National Judicial Council as to why he doesn't want a particular name. Could it be that that is what is no, happening right now? The, the president can only act on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council. And to the best of my knowledge, there has been no communication, there has been no rejection of the nomination of justice. Why the quiet and why the silence? A lot of people will be asking, why is the president quiet about this matter? No, you know, you know uh, we, we, are, we, are, we have gone through all this before. Uh, this business of acting, capacity, it's a common phenomenon, particularly under the present dispensation. Uh, as I was saying about Mr. Magu, he's acting for over one year now. And there's no way you can perform your functions in any office for three months without stepping, stepping on toes. Mm. And, and, and most, most, most of the time, powerful toes. If you now take the name to the Senate for confirmation, after six months or three months, you may run into problems. Mm. Uh, you have been on the road, on the streets, several times. We've seen you with um, eminent Nigerians, and uh, you've been an active, uh, rise activist. And one we wonder, what's your take on the protest, the stand of the police, and the protester? Two-Face Idibia, very unusual you find him on the streets, but now that he's on the street, and uh, generally the atmosphere around it, the police have said, do not shelve your plans to protest. What do you make of it? For me personally, it's a very sad development, and I will tell you why. Um, in in uh, July 2003, General Muhammad Dubari led a protest in Kano of the members of the EMPP to protest what they perceived as the manipulation of the general election of that year. They were tear gassed by the police. In the process, I think uh, the late, um, I mean, uh, Dr. Chuba Okadibo, mm -hmm. from a Senate president, died based on, you know, the way he was treated naturally. I was contacted and I went to court pro bono and I won the case in 2004, April 2004, where the federal court declared that it is illegal to ask for police permit to demonstrate in Nigeria because we are no longer in the military junta. No, no, it's the colonial people. Yeah, yeah. Because it was the colonial regime that brought that stupid ordinance. The police went on appeal. The appeal was decided on December 12, 2007. The police lost, and the court of appeal made the point abundantly clear. That by virtue of the provisions of sections 39 and 40, Nigerians have the right to assemble for or against the government of the day in order to defend their interests. So I do not expect the police to say, yeah, two people are going to clash tomorrow, therefore. No, it's the duty of the police to protect protesters. Mm -hmm. And if you are not going to allow, you must go to court and get another. Okay.
Mr. Fenny Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, many thanks uh, for your thoughts on these matters. Well, we have entered into the year 2017 and information and governance must go hand in hand. Information is key, of course. Not in today's governance will the people be deprived of information if they are fed with information of campaign promises. They deserve information on how they are governed. If you don't give them, they will find it. If they cannot, they will get it somehow and they most times very injurious to the polity. Government needs to be more committed to good governance, accountability and transparency. It's no longer an oversight not to inform accurately. In this age, it is an offence. And that's our show for tonight. Many thanks for being part of it. I'm Sean Wakimale. On behalf of the team, bye for now.